Hi, my name is Jennifer Chen and I'm a clinical assistant professor here at Stanford Medicine. Today we're going to talk about how to approach a patient with multiple nevi or moles. And we have a patient here for you today who we'll examine together. Hi, I'm Jennifer Chen. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you, doctor. You ready for us to take a look at you today? I'm ready. Great. Um, so when I look at a patient who we're doing a full body skin exam on, I always start by trying to get a general feel for how many moles there are and how they're distributed. So normally what I would do is go in a systematic manner from the head down to the toes. So I start with the scalp, then I move on to the face, making sure to look at the medial canthi. You want to look at the ears, including the conchal bowls. Then I move down to the arms, making sure to remove any jewelry that might be obscuring my view of what's going on on the skin. Make sure also that when you look at the hands and feet, you're also looking at the web spaces between the fingers and toes. So now we're gonna take a look at a few different findings here. So we can start right up here on the forehead. Uh, when you examine the skin, you always want to get your fingers involved. You wanna be able to tell, is it a papule, uh, something you can feel, or is it a macule, something that uh, you can't feel when you run your fingers over it. Right here, you can see that there's a gritty papule that uh, can't really be seen so easily with the naked eye, but you can feel it when you run your finger over it. That is an actinic keratosis, a precancerous growth that we do like to treat to prevent skin cancer. And that's a classic presentation where we'll see it uh, or we'll feel it before we can see it. We can move on to the back here. So taking a look here, you can see multiple non-blanchable bright red vascular papules. This is called a cherry angioma. They're extremely common and they run in families. So here you see pink and brown symmetric thin papule with some central hairs. It's symmetric, it's one color, it's smaller than six millimeters. This is a normal mole. Let's move on to your arms. So over here, you have stuck on appearing brown, thin, flat topped plaque. This is a seborrheic keratosis that looks like it could be a sticker just stuck right on the skin. That characteristic stuck on appearance can help you to distinguish a seborrheic keratosis from a mole. These are common in everyone as they age and they are nothing to worry about. The ABCDEs is a mnemonic to help you remember what features you're looking for that could indicate melanoma. A stands for asymmetry. B stands for border irregularity, like notched or scalloped borders. C stands for multiple colors. There may be shades of tan, brown, or black, or sometimes red, white, or blue. D stands for diameter. Uh, melanomas are usually greater than six millimeters, about the size of a pencil eraser, but uh, they can be smaller. E stands for evolution or change, and this is the most important sign. If something is changing, you want to take it seriously. The ugly duckling sign refers to looking for a mole that looks different from all of the rest. This can usually be a very helpful hint towards finding a melanoma. In summary, it's especially important when you're looking for melanoma to always do a thorough skin exam. Remember, be systematic. Don't miss those hidden areas like the conchal bowls, the medial canthi, the inner gluteal cleft and perianal region, and the finger and toe web spaces. Um, make sure you take a thorough history and physical and take seriously anything that the patient thinks is new or changing. Thank you for your time. Please refer to the Stanford 25 website for more information. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.